The One Space Love Show for the love of music, lifestyle, well-being and culture while caring for our planet. On this show, I will be chatting with musicians, artists and creative minds that are living life on purpose by doing what they love. ちゅうたとえきゃくやいうまつわこれ。えてまま。えてパパ。えてこうちろめてたま。ねらてみきてまなたがたね。まなあつわね。Welcome, Nico, to One Space Love from Casual Healing. It is so beautiful to have you here in Sydney with us. You're here for the South South by Southwest Festival. Welcome. Kia ora, Steph. <laughs> and kia ora. Kia ora, Nico. Kia ora. Beautiful to have you. But first of all, cheers, Steph. Oh, thanks. <laughs> cheers. And I want to give a bit of a backstory, but I just thought we'll go in and get into yeah. our chat. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, well, I'm just, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. I mean, thank you for hosting me and for the lovely scrambled eggs earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, hospitality is so gratefully received um, when you're on tour. Yes, and I want to go into that because, look, we'll just rewind because actually Nico's Lando landed here as part of South by Southwest before we go into the journey and let's just land. And I think it's your second time to Australia, second time to Sydney. Yeah, second time to Sydney. And the first time I got to meet um, Nico through his father and you actually came to my home um, and so it's been beautiful. We were going to do this chat in a radio studio but we've, we've done it in my home and we got to, you got to make breakfast for me mm. and how important, you know, is that on touring? It's so important yeah. um, because you're constantly moving around the place and so, yeah, one thing certain is that when you're t- touring, that um, nothing's certain, <laughs> yeah, and that nothing's the same. And um, what we what we eat, uh, you know what they say: you are what you eat. Mm. Um, well, then, yeah, if that's even half true, um, it's important to prioritize nourishment. Um, because personally, I know when at home, um, we do our best to eat whole foods, come from the land, um, with minimal processing. Um, and I know that it makes me feel good. Mm. So coming to a new place and eating new kai can be, can be exciting Mm. and can be a gamble, um and yeah, so it's nice just to have a few staples like eggs <laughs> and um yeah, fruit and avocados and mm. all things that you know wherever you go on the earth it, it's 
they're generally going to make you feel pretty good, mm. pretty energized. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, that's the food aspect of tō. And, um, yeah. And one, finding your roots in the concrete city. I mean, we were talking about that, like, mm. you know, it's one thing being on tour a bit, when you're staying in the city, you're part of a, an event like South by Southwest. It's it's finding those little pockets of time to ground yourself, especially you know coming from such beautiful land and and being so connected to country where you are. For sure, man. Like yeah, it's pretty overwhelming for us to come to Sydney, and I think it's the biggest city that most of us have ever seen. Wow. Um, without a doubt, from most of our touring party, our humble little Aotearoa touring party. And in that sense, it's a real privilege to come and see something new, even if it's man-made and um, a symbol of colonisation and capitalism. Um, it's something new to look at mm. and marvel at. Um but not to get carried away by. Yes. Which is really easy with these giant towering concrete giants and, um, yeah, not a square metre of soil around. To, um, I have to give you a bit of a tour because there are some beautiful parks around the city. <laughs> please. <laughs> and I've got please. the beautiful beaches and so, yeah, we'll give you, I think that's, and that's part of it, isn't it? getting a local to be showing you where all the beautiful spots are that you can escape. Yes, <laughs> man. Yes. No, it's, it absolutely is who yeah. you know, man. Yeah. It's who you know. And otherwise we'd be just like wandering around <laughs> like headless chickens in this <laughs> giant maze. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it, it has been so important making connections um, to locals. Yeah. And really grassroots, you know, grounded locals. Um, who know the spots and yeah. they know the vibe and they know what nourishes the soul. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's go back because you grew up, started in Christchurch, and let's talk about what it's like growing up for you and how music became part of your path, which is so strong. Mm. Yeah, man. Oh, it's huge acknowledgement to my father, Matsu mm. Tehuki, um, for who you are to me and to your community. Um, you're my rock and my chief and um, have a lot of respect for my papa. Um, newfound respect um, because I think as a child I was pretty cheeky fella. You were cheeky. I was a cheeky <laughs> fella, and I'm slowly alchemizing all of that excitement that made me cheeky once. I'm trying to turn that into something a bit more <laughs> respectful, mm. I guess, because I love being cheeky, but, you know, you, you have to be respectful about it these days because, um, yeah, my grace has worn off. Uh, now that I'm 25 and I have two kids. Um, so thank you, Papa. Aroha nui kia koe. Uh, me huri te kōrero, te mauri kia mama. And now I just turn my attention to my mama. Aroha nui kia koe, mama. My beautiful, sweet mother. Um... Yeah, mum was a bit of a party girl. <laughs> I say this quite a lot in my interviews because <laughs> it's a big part of the story. Um, maybe where I get a lot of my vigor for life and excitement um, for gatherings and stuff, you know, because I, I love parties. Yeah. Um, and when I say party, I don't mean alcohol and drugs and loud music. Uh, my favorite party is like maybe a uh, roast lamb, salad, roast potatoes, kumara, and then, you know. So a like community? A handful, of, a handful yeah. of like beautiful people. 
Um, yeah, that's my kind of party these days. And maybe a bit of apple crumble to finish it off. Mm-hmm. And um, an acoustic guitar and some drums and just, uh, yeah, I do love um, being a part of when people come together. And, um, yeah, I get a lot of that from my mama. She's a real social social soul. And um, through her years of partying, she discovered a lot of amazing music. And she gave me a great taste, a great palate for particularly like um, folk soul, and a little bit of trip-hop. Mm. Yeah, I like trip-hop, um, like Porter's Head. Yeah. Massive Attack. Yeah, Massive yeah. Attack. Yeah. Just um, some of that real old vibey stuff, man, yeah. That's my mama, man. And, um, yeah, so that's my roots, Yeah. I did not know that about you and about your mama, and I love that. I have had the pleasure of working with your father on tour and he has even opened the One Space Love venue and closed the venue, so it's pretty special. Mm. Would you say then that, you you know, um, Papa brought more in the tradition and that connection um, to your the Maori side and then, you know, you're saying that more the influences all the different music styles from mum. Feels like, yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Nice. But I get my feel, feel a lot of my feel from dad, like skanking the guitar and yeah, yeah my love for reggae and roots and and so yeah. with the learning because you're a multi instrumentalist producer, so talented in so many areas at a young age and a father of two children. Mm. Did dad teach you the instruments or did you study music? Yeah, I I got I studied jazz piano. Okay. Um I did two thirds of a degree in jazz piano. And um the piano was my first love instrumentally. Um I picked up the guitar later. Um, but I went to a really small Māori boys boarding school mm. and that's called Hatopaura College. And in the chapel there was a beautiful upright piano and I discovered a passion and a love for piano when I was 13 when I moved to that school. And there was a lovely teacher, and her name was Fire Roslyn. And she had been at that school for so long that she had been my dad's piano teacher. And um, she was so lovely, and she saw something in me. And she touched it, and she spoke love into it, into my talent which was very affirming and reassuring. And she believed in me, you know, before my talents had really been uncovered. She saw my potential and I just, yeah, thank you, Five Roslyn, and for, yeah, for that. And and I think that's powerful um, for us all to keep in mind is that when you see potential in someone, um, speak speak to it and um, probe it and question it and activate it with with loving words. Yeah, because as we see, you know, like that that talent or that potential can go so far and do such good things for this world. Eh? Yeah, piano. Yeah, that was my first love. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was really special. And it is often when we are acknowledged, it gives us almost like the seed has a little burst of energy that then we can do the next step to meet, push ourselves towards that path. 
Yeah, yeah. The seed, plant the seed. Yeah. And you grew up with your father touring and we had an amazing journey in the music industry. Mm. When did you sort of, there was another band that you were touring with before Casual Healing. So you got, was that your first experience moving out into the touring world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think you're referring to Half Cast. Yes, yes. Yeah, Half Cast, man. Um, Did that come together after school? At school, eh? Yes, like, I so. um, <laughs> at, at my, when I was in doing my music degree, um, that's where I met Keanu and Jason. Okay. And Keanu is an amazing drummer, and Jason is an amazing bass player. And we were all studying at Fitzidea School of Music together. And I was writing some songs and I wanted to hear them come to life mm. with rhythm and bass. Yeah. And um, I had so much awe for Jason and Keanu and their playing. They were a few years older than me and a, f- a few years further into their degree. And um, it took a lot of courage to um, ask them, um, but I asked them to if they wanted to learn some songs that I had written, and they were keen. And ever since then, they've supported me with my songwriting, uh, supported me also on a personal level, um, just as older brothers. Mm. Um, because they have really strong foundations of family and um, faith um, and have taught me many things. And so that be- that was the start of our journey as a family, creating a family and um, with our music at the centre. And that's what keeps bringing us together. And I did the maths and it's been eight years since we met each other and started jamming. And so the groove and the set and when we play, it's like so telepathic. Yeah, it's so telepathic. Um, And, yeah, we just glue so well these days, me and and those boys. And, um, yeah, we recently got um, blessed with... A young lady called Elisa Bird. Yes, she's our sax player. Yeah, and um, yeah, just having a sister on stage has added such a yeah has deepened um, that feeling of community on stage. And um, yep, Joe Jenkins on the keys. Jordan Gray on the percussion and myself on rhythm guitar and vocals. And it is just such a unit, man. Mm. Like everywhere we go, we're looking out for each other. Um, We put each other first. And someone falls down, we lift them up, you know. And someone gets too high, we, we bring them back down and... It's been me a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of the songs that we'll go into later. <laughs> yeah, for um, sure. It, because, so did it transition into casual healing? Is and it, then the band grew. Okay. So it, yeah. it's really been eight years since some of those key members have been in casual healing now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. What, so transitioning into casual healing, you started with the EP. Mm -hmm. And then now you've just dropped this new album called Driftwood Mm -hmm. and you've had an extraordinary response. But I want to go into the making of Driftwood because I'm really excited about this new album. I've been listening to it on rotation. Um, It it is is one of, it's, it's so catchy, but also there's so many levels to this album um, Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. reggae, soul. As we said, you can feel a bit of the the, the trip hop in there as well. It's it's all in there. I mean, I compared it to Alan Stone blend with with Bob Marley. You know, meets mm-hmm. Fat Freddy Drop. It's like it's yeah. so good. <laughs> I'm really excited about it, and I'm you know it's so good to have you here. Um, a lot of it was done in your home studio, mm. and but what I also found was really you know. I wanted to acknowledge is you, you you worked with so many creatives and it felt like a real I'm getting that song like it's a family affair like it just mm. felt it feels fun the, mm. you know the whole album so take us on a bit of a journey you know because it, it is about that seed you know we're going back to your teacher acknowledging you mm. and creating that and pushing it into releasing an album it it, it takes mind you know, centering and direction, you know. Mm. Is there some key points on the road you want to share with us that helped that come through? Yeah. Um, the fucker papa or the history of Driftwood is really interesting to reflect on. Yeah. Because... It took about four years to make the album. And if I can go back to the seed, it was in the wake of Firstborn, which is that debut EP, five tracks that came out in 2021, I think. Mm. Or 22. I think it was 21. 21. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that, that had some... Lively feels and Firstborn was an ode to my son, Uenuku, um, when he was born and the journey that I went through becoming a father. Mm. And, um, yeah, I used music to express a lot of those emotions and recorded that album in a caravan, in the Chur caravan. Um, and then I've, I had this thought, man, I got to keep moving. Um, I want to make an album Mm. and I had already been writing a lot of songs. I'd written nine songs and I was like, cool, how do I evolve as an artist? Um, because we have to be evolving as artists. Mm. We can't get lost or stuck on a winning formula because it's only a winning formula in that time and space and then you need to recreate yourself which is the journey of life as well it's like we can't stay stagnant so I thought a good way to evolve as an artist is evolve the sonics of the album and I decided I would go to a producer that I really liked Mm -hmm. to take the Sonics to the next level. And he was keen. And we had some deep corridors and deep wainangas because this music is so spiritual for me and means more than surface level and we jumped straight into the studio, into Massey Studios with my bro Dane and my other bro Henry on drum and bass. And we tracked nine songs over... Yeah, how long? What, how, what was yeah, that was over? that? Maybe five days yeah. in the studio. And then we spent nine months mixing. And that nine months... Many things happened. We came to love the songs. We grew sick of the songs. Uh, We basically were sitting on this beautiful album of songs. And about a year into the process, when we were at the final stages of mixing and had put thousands of albums into it, collectively, myself and the producer, I got a transmission from my highest being that I was to scratch the album completely 
and re-record it myself. And that is exactly what I did. Um, I called the bro over for a cup of coffee and basically said, brother, I love you. I love you lots. And you're an amazing producer. And what we've made is an amazing body of art. But this is how I feel in my soul. And I just had a feeling and it could have been a combination of doubt or a combination of like soul purpose, all these things mixed up, but I just knew it didn't feel right. And I need to honor that because this music and my family and my culture is all I have. Yeah. So... We scratched it. We chucked it on the shelf. The bro was... Um, did he feel your heart that you he, were coming from your truth? He did. Like he did. Friend. And I, I, oh, he knew me. He knew me after a year of working with me. That's how I <laughs> operate. So yeah. he were, I think in a sense he wouldn't, wasn't surprised. <laughs> um, and then began the journey of Driftwood. And it was a beautiful, gentle journey of um, discovering who I am as a producer and who I am as a songwriter and who I am as a father and who I am as a partner and as a brother mm. and as a son and as a grandson. And that's what it is. That's what Driftwood is. Um, it's a my testimony. Oh of who I am and what I am and why I am and who I am and who made me who I am. And it was such a powerful process because I was just stepping into fatherhood and stepping out of boyhood, childhood. And that is such a gnarly transition as a 21-year-old for me. I was still so selfish and self-centered, and that's what children are. Mm. They think about themselves, and that's their function, and that's what, you know. And then slowly we develop that awareness that this is a shared experience. And so when I started writing Driftwood and when I was producing Driftwood, I was moving through so many layers of evolution and of grief, of grieving my boyhood and grieving grieving the simple times and grieving um, my independence, grieving my relationship with my partner that has never been the same since we have babies and will, will never be the same in the best way. Aho. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> and yeah, basically I got to take a look at my childhood and what is the makeup of this man and what do I have to offer this world? And how do I put that into a album of songs that could touch anyone's heart? Mm. How do I make this message universal? And I did that by touching on all of my influences from my soul influences to my country influences to my folk influences to my Māori influences and then to my reggae, hip-hop, trip-hop, yeah. psychedelic, funk, house. I thought if I could put all of those genres into one album, I'm sure that every person in this world could find one song on that album that they enjoy listening to. And then it's just a matter of putting in that message into every song. And the message is love. Love is at the center. 
And it's so such a broad term, love, you know, aroha. You know, there's, there's self-love and then there's true love and then there's lots of different loves. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Yeah. Let's, call, let's say that's, that one's at the center, man, because that is it. That is true love is unconditional. It's giving. So you're making me go transition to Troy with his um what's it Troy King, isn't it? Mm. With his song True Love. Mm, Your true. father put me onto that song. Uh, yeah. I, I Troy love, Kingy. Kingy. He acknowledged this album. Yeah. What an honor. And as well as Tiki Tani. I mean, I mentioned this in our radio chat yesterday, but I, yeah. I really do feel like just to hear the journey you went through and, again, to be acknowledged by artists that are creating ripples effects with their with their art, with their their art mastery in art and mm. to be acknowledged, you know, I mean, I want to ask how that felt. Yeah. How did that feel? <laughs> oh, it just felt like I was, I felt like I was meeting my uncles for the first time. <laughs> 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 it was beautiful. Yeah. Because I've always known them. Yes. And now they know me, and now they're my uncles. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And really nice to have them as mentors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so bringing Driftwood together, um, there was still some collaborations. There was this beautiful clip you shared on socials um, where you there was a, some film screening or something to do with the album, and the feeling in the room was that it it it, it was love. It was community. Love, so they felt like there was a lot of artistic hands that came in to support mm. your project. Some collaborations of vocals that came in to some of the songs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to share a little bit? Because it just to me, it shows me that at the centre is your heart and your love. Yeah. You yeah. can see that in this reel. Go over to Casual Healings um, Instagram, and there's this beautiful sharing. So we've got to scroll a little bit down mm. of, of this screening. So was that a film clip or? I, yeah, I, th- I think was it in a cinema? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is a special. Uh, that was a special um, showcase night of all of the casual healing music videos that were ever made. Right. Because I've made all of my videos with the same director. And he's amazing. His name's Mason Rudd. An amazing mind. Um, He's on his pathway to visual mastery and just a lovely man. And we made our first music video for Green Tigers. That was 2021, maybe. And um, since then, we've made eight music videos, I think. Oh. Seven or eight, yeah. We're working on number eight, I think, now. And, um, yeah, that screening or that cinema show, it was cool. We just rented out a cinema (laughs) and, like, completely took it over. And my nan crochets all these bucket hats, and we sell them as merchandise. And, um, yeah, that sold a bunch of hats, sold a bunch of T-shirts, posters, and we got to um, premiere a new music video that night. So we kind of built it up from the yeah. start, showed the discography, and then finished with a brand new one that no one had seen, and that's for Up and Down. Oh, so the music video well, for wanna, Up and Down. Yeah, go to that track because – before I go to that track, talk about craftsmanship. Was that mum's mum that um, crochets or was that dad's? Mum's mum. Mum's mum, I felt, yeah. Mm-hmm. You were also um, sharing on your social that you're also making the the rings for casual healing. I mean. What? Mm-hmm, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Tinkering in a new craftsmanship there. That's right. It's all in-house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all in-house. Yeah, my partner is actually a jeweller. Okay. So. I was studying my music degree at the same school she was studying her jewellery degree, oh. which is how we connected. Um, we actually first met when I was busking on the street and she came and listened and we had an interesting conversation. And, um, yeah, so she's giving me a bit of help on figuring out how to how to craft a few rings, sterling silver, handmade, casual healing rings. 
the English. chur rings. So chur. And what does chur mean? Yeah. Ah, uh, it can mean a lot of things. Okay. Okay. We could probably do a whole podcast okay, okay. on chur. What I noticed at the concert we went to, part of South by Southwest, you know, in the audience, you were like connecting with the local Maoris and they were chur. Chur. Yeah, they <laughs> like, chur. <laughs> <laughs> I love chur, man. Yeah. Anytime you hear chur, you know. And they know, were getting very excited by they it. They were. They get excited. <laughs> Fair enough. It's yeah. a very exciting word, man. Yeah. Like, um, Chu, the the fucker pop of chu, the history of chu. A lot of people don't know this. We just say it. We just say chu, chu, chu bro, chu cuz. Okay. Um, the fucker pop of chu, the story I've been told <laughs> was when the Maori battalion, which was a fleet of Maori soldiers who tragically were drafted and sent to war, they were in Italy and they were checking out the scenery and. Um, absorbing the culture and a lot of the locals were saying, you know, certo, which is something they said and they say in Italian a lot, certo, and it means of course. So they'd be like, you know, certo, si, certo. Uh, can I have a, oh, can I have a, a cup of coffee? I was going to say, cafe. Cafe, cafe, <laughs> yeah. si, certo, certo, yeah. certo. Yeah. And the boys were just like, oh, certo, certo, cer, cer, cer. <laughs> and they brought it home, apparently, and that's the birth of cher. And um, so it can mean, you know, of course. It can mean hello. It can mean goodbye. It can mean I love you. It's just an acknowledgement. acknowledgement. It's yeah. like cher. Um, but it's super informal. And that's why I love it because it's mm-hmm. casual, you know, it's casual, casual healing. healing. <laughs> and then we got CH, casual healing, and we got the ch. Mm-hmm. And then we can take it a step further where ch can mean casual healing's universal remedy. So when you say ch, it can mean, it can be medicinal. And it's how you say the ch. And uh, yeah, it's the delivery of the chur. So we're doing a follow up episode just on chur. The chur, yeah, no, for real. <laughs> yeah, for uh, it's real. Like, I'm being for real. <laughs> it's deep, yeah. and um, it's a big part of casual healing universe. Is um, yeah, it's chur. It's just a cool little quirky little kind of branding, but at the same time, casually healing us records or casual healing's universal remedy. It's finding all these cool acronyms. Because the studio had that name in it. Yeah. yeah. So the studio is called Te Whare Chur. Yes. The House of Chur. I didn't, I didn't know how to say the first part. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just going, it has Chur in it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Chur Studio. The House of Chur. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we're cooking up. I'm cooking oh, so it up. Means a House of Chur. Okay. Te Whare Chur. Yeah. 25 sterling silver. Signet rings that I carved the shape out of. Make an order on website? Yeah, we'll probably do pre-orders soon. Yeah. And, yeah. Beautiful. Well, I love that now we know <laughs> what that means because that's going to be on the ring, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, you know, with full transparency to anyone listening, um, the idea just came from a, um, a place of wondering how can I – make money as an artist yes <laughs> to Fair be enough. completely honest yeah and then you can and then you can add the sacred to it you know then it can become something meaningful but at the start it's kind of like well i'd love some more money so that i can create a bit more freedom for my family freedom yeah so it's make some rings yeah yeah i love it <laughs> Well, we're, we're almost at the end of our chat. I just want to highlight a little bit of the album because I got to see you play live and I'm going to go see you, I don't know when you're tuning into this, but I'm going to go see you tonight in Sydney at the Lansdowne Hotel um, for, but as part of South by Southwest, which is an incredible event here in Sydney um, from tech, from Austin, Texas. Um where was I going? I was going with, when I got to see you, I loved 
I, I fell in love with this new album, Driftwood, and there's some real key songs that stood out for me. I, it, it's all good. Let me just say that. Um, up and Down, uh, your version of One Love, mm-hmm. um, and there was, what what is the track when you start, um, you end it with Get Up, Stand Up, Stand Up for Your Rights. Um, I can't remember the name of that track. but mm, Was that Amble the other day? Yeah, um, I think so. Well. Amble's not on that album. It's not on that album. It's just a solo release. Single, yeah, I yeah. saw that. Um, but anyway, the whole performance is great. So why don't we just touch on, uh, I mean, like, why don't we just talk about Up and Down because I think that there was a cute story you shared of how that came about, <laughs> mm. writing that song. Yeah. And But it's such an important message, especially as you're growing as an artist and you are definitely, you know, climbing that artist ladder right now is recognizing those ups and downs and staying connected um and being humble mm. yeah that's the crux of it is mm. um because it came to you on a toilet right yeah i was sitting <laughs> on the toilet which i often find a bit of mindfulness on my toilet yeah. <laughs> i don't know about you <laughs> it's where i get away from all my kids yeah exactly <laughs> It's like the only quiet place. Yeah. Sweet moment of peace. Yeah. Yeah. Hum- humility is a good place to 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 go to. Um especially as an artist. Mm. Um and as you say, becoming more successful. Uh, yeah. The ego is a interesting space to navigate and I guess sometimes you can strive for humility but sometimes life just humbles you Mm. and for me getting to where I am has been a journey of how softly can I surrender into this moment that I'm being humbled? So I'll be at home and I'll be being an asshole to the kids and my partner will be like, hey, you're being an asshole to the kids. (sighs) She's right. Mm. But do do I let her be right? Or do I fight it? And there's, there is a niggle always to argue and be like, hey, but they did this. Or do you just, or do you just, boom, sink in, soak it up, eat it up. You're right. You're so right. I'm sorry. Let me look at myself. Let me check that out. What's going on? Let me look inside and see, okay, instead of blaming, which we can all do about anything forever, what's our role? Accountability. Accountability. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's exactly what the song's about. It's, um, it's time to take accountability for your role. And also there's a lot of things we can't control. You know, there is a lot and a lot of things we can't control. And so my hope with this song, with this art, is that we can all come to a little bit closer to just accepting what is happening, the many parts of life that's out of our control. Finding our place and just riding the waves, the ups and the downs. <laughs> exactly, my G. Yeah. yeah. Beautifully shared. Thank you so much. Che. Oh, there, there is so much storytelling weaved into um, the lyrics in every track on this album. Um, so it. It's something you can listen to and move and and dance and then you can also just listen to and contemplate because so many beautiful um, insight in there that you've shared and vulnerability. Mm. 
Thank so much you. I could go into, but Thanks, my last Steph. question, you're very welcome, um, <laughs> is just go over and listen to the album, please. Um, we're going to ask Nico to share a little teaser of a song for us, but I want to ask my last question. Could you sum up for me, because we're on the One Space Love Show, what is love to you? Hmm. To me right now, love means taking a deep breath and making sure the people around you feel safe and Put them first. Just try putting your loved ones first. Yeah, that's where I met with love. Yeah. You, will you pick up the guitar and bless us with a little bit of music before we say goodbye? <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Thank you. Got my lovely mess in here that I brought all the way from your lounge. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually a gu guitar that was gifted to me. It's so beautiful. Is there anything in particular you want to hear today, Steph? Can you play songs of acoustically off the album? Yeah. Because Driftwood or Ups Up and Down, I love. <laughs> yeah, I like Driftwood. I love Driftwood. Yeah, I was going to mention the lyrics of that, so if you can share that, they're very powerful. Let's play that, eh? <laughs> Scars, and don't be afraid to follow your heart And don't be afraid of the things in the dark And don't be afraid of the things you don't know You are who you are and you know what you know You were where you were and you go where you go Your home is within you wherever you go And don't be afraid to leave us behind Gave you the wings on your back so you fly Taught you the words so that you could sing Much lighter than me and your mother could be So love us and leave us and love us some more You got my support, that's what family's for and cry if you want at the end of the day I'm just trying to get bitter drifting away <laughs> Cry if you want at the end of the day I'm just trying to get bitter drifting away <laughs> Cry if you want at the end of the day I'm just trying to get bitter 
You never know, you never, never know how hard it is We're all trying our best, uh, oh sweet Lord So before you go, before you go and start talking shit Are you trying your best? Don't be afraid to be who you are And don't be afraid to reveal all your scars And don't be afraid to follow your heart Don't be afraid of the things in the dark Don't be afraid of the things you don't know You are who you are and you know what you know Where were you were and you go where you go Your home is within you wherever you go Don't be afraid to leave us behind Gave you the wings on your back so you fly Taught you the words so that you could sing Much louder than me and your mother could be So love us and leave us And love us some more You got my support, that's what family's for And cry if you want At the end of the day I'm just trying to get bitter Drifting away Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Nico Tehuki from Casual Healing Boom. <laughs> and that is a glimpse of what is on Driftwood album. Do we say goodbye, Kiora, or is Kiora just hello? Kiora, if Kiora means be alive, mm. you can say that at any time. Kiora. Kiora. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on the One Space Love Show. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. You. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, we did it. We did it. Thanks for that. We freaking did it. You've been listening to One Space Love Podcast and I'm Steph Pappas. Thank you for listening. You can head over to onespace.love to learn more about what it is One Space is and over on the website all of the previous podcasts are available. You can watch the chats on video on our YouTube channel One Space Love. I hope these shows inspire you to create more space in your life for doing what you love. One Space Love. One space love